I'm only going to be talking about Rent a Girlfriend seasons one and two in this video. I haven't read the manga, and God knows I never will. Okay, look, I'm not gonna pretend like Rent a Girlfriend is a show worth analyzing, like, at all. It's obviously the average, terrible, horny bait harem rom com that every anime season diary is out, that the lowest of the low consume and then proceed to go on their private Twitter accounts to jerk off to pictures of the girls naked. I'm not denying any of that. There's just something about Rent a Girlfriend that makes it impossible to look away from. No doubt. It's absolute shit, complete garbage, and not even fun to watch, but it's strangely mesmerizing in the worst possible way. I could never watch this show on my own, but my group of friends have kind of all decided that we have to watch each new season when it comes out, you know, eventually. Like, it's not urgent or anything that we immediately binge it, but it's just sitting there waiting. We know we'll watch it, it's just a matter of when. With season 3 coming out, and that horrible feeling of knowing I'm going to have to watch this pile of dog shit soon enough, I thought I could sit down and really talk to you guys about something. More specifically, someone. The one character that keeps me from dying of boredom and actually makes me feel the strange and whimsical emotion of happiness that is oh so rare while watching Rent a Girlfriend, and why people that hate her should be locked up in a cage and fed cat food for the rest of their lives. You know, I'm not really sure how most of the community actually feels about Ruka. I'm not really on any Twitter, I mostly follow artists and a very few anime content creators, so I don't see a lot of opinions on Rent-A-Girlfriend floating around my timeline. All that to say, if anyone dislikes Ruka for whatever reason, I would like to state my case on why I believe she's a very sympathetic and fun character. Ruka Sarashina is a 17-year-old high schooler who is a rental girlfriend in order to treat her heart condition. She has a very slow heart rate, which affects her being able to do arduous tasks or strain her body, since she could potentially pass out. The reason she became a rental girlfriend is so she could find a boy to fall in love with to make her heart rate increase. It, it sounds ridiculous because it is, because you know, even if she did fall in love, anyone with half a brain knows that the adrenaline rush from having a crush on someone doesn't last forever and she'd be back to square one eventually. Bad writing aside, the tragedy of her character isn't so much that she has this heart condition, which is tragic, but the most upsetting part of it all is who fixes it, which is of course our wonderful main character, Kazuya. By chance, and, co and, a, and a series of coincidences, our poor Ruka is put into a situation where she's trapped with Kazuya for a bit, and what do you know, when she's with him, her heart rate picks up. Through no fault of her own, trapped in the universe of a madman who himself has fallen in love with one of his own OCs, Ruka is narratively forced to be in love with Kazuya, as it seems like he's the only person she's ever had a crush on until now. The ending theme for episode 7 of season 1 focuses on Ruka's backstory and shows why Kazuya is so important to her right from the jump. At this point, we already know how much of a shit show Kazuya's life is, how much of a pathetic loser he is, blah blah blah. So immediately, when watching this scene, I was terrified for this poor girl and what was going to happen to her, rightfully so. Seeing her suddenly start obsessing with Kazuya was like watching a toddler stumble its way onto oncoming traffic. There's nothing I could do but watch the massacre unfold. I fully and with my entire being do not fault Ruka for her actions when it comes to Kazuya for multiple reasons. Um, my first reason is Kazuya is a complete loser and Ruka is an adorable girl who literally wants to settle down with him. Chizuru is this flaky beauty queen who constantly berates Kazuya, I mean rightfully so, but putting that aside, Kazuya has a chance to be with this girl who totally loves him and will do anything for him, 
who has a medical condition that means being apart from him puts her in danger, and yet he continuously treats her like some shit he accidentally smeared on his shoe. Kazuya, time and time again, prioritizes Chizuru even after accepting to be Ruka's boyfriend, which was his decision in the end. My second reason is um, Kazuya does have the power in the relationship. He's four years older, he's in college, he is an adult, and Ruka's still in high school. She's still at that school level headspace. She's not moving on to a different, more adult chapter of her life like Kazuya has. If he wanted to say no, he could have. It doesn't matter how much he was pressured. Um, he's an adult who should and can make his own decisions. I mean, yes, he's an anime character. These are all anime characters. This isn't real life. But they're representing real life in, in what they're depicting here. So after accepting Ruka as his girlfriend, he continues pining after Chizuru and avoiding Ruka like the plague when all she wants is to spend time with him because she genuinely likes him for some godforsaken reason. Ruka being 17 and Kazuya at 21, they are at two completely different stages in life and maturity levels. Even if Kazuya is a loser, which she is, that doesn't mean he's on the same mental level as Ruka. Again, anime characters, but the, the ages are written in there for a reason, so I'm gonna extrapolate what I will from that. I don't really care how childish Ruka acts. If she's supposedly selfish or makes Kazuya's life slightly inconvenient, she's goddamn allowed to. In my eyes, all the other characters in the show are guilty of taking advantage of this poor girl who just wants to be loved. The absolute worst the show gets with this is the arc where Ruka is trying to tell Kazuya's grandma that she's dating Kazuya instead of Chizuru, which is the truth. The whole time, the show wants you to feel stressed out that Ruka is going to end the lie that Kazuya and Chizuru are dating, but instead I felt dread because I just knew that wasn't going to happen because the narrative continues to punish Ruka for existing and loves to paint Chizuru as this goddess who can do no wrong. What are we gonna do? For I can't pretend to be both our boyfriends. Sure I can. I learned how to handle delicate social situations from a little show called Three's Company. Oh wait, I'm confused. Now tell me, Fry, which one of these ladies are you involved with? Ah. Uh... Na, 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 na. Before that scene with the dinner and all that, Kazuya even went as far as to tell his and Chizuru's grandma that Ruka was crazy, mentally unstable. Well, see, Ruka is a pathological liar. She's what? A liar? Yeah, it's weird. She's usually super nice, but then she'll make up the most random things sometimes. So she would be unable to tell the truth to them without looking like a lunatic. There was quite literally nothing Ruka could do in that situation, except for helplessly flounder as she realized the person she loves most was sabotaging her in order to keep up the lie that he was dating the Disney Channel version of a prostitute over her. Ruka's actually pretty similar in characterization to Knives Chow from Scott Pilgrim in terms of how she's treated by the MC. The naive, younger, love-struck girl who's treated like she's worthless because she'll always be second best. Honestly, it's kind of strange to me how Knives is much more universally loved than Ruka when they are so similar. They both pine after a loser who started dating them for selfish reasons and led them on. In Knives' case, it was because Scott was trying to fill the void after breaking up with Envy, and for Kazuya, it's literally only because he kind of feels a little guilty, and also Chizuru pressures him to date Ruka so that Kazuya will leave her alone. Which doesn't work at all, since Kazuya continually sees Chizuru behind Ruka's back. Knives actually gets much better treatment because Scott actually has the balls to break up with her eventually, while Ruka is still being strung along hundreds of chapters later. Another reason Ruka's treatment is so frustrating is because Kazuya is attracted to her. So don't be in the comments saying shit like, you shouldn't have to date someone who isn't even like, because it's just not true. 
time and time again, Kazuya is shown to be very attracted to Ruka, but refuses to do anything with her because it would be wrong, since he's loyal to Chizuru, who does not want to date him. Basically, there's this dude who has a super cute, loving, and supportive girlfriend, but he refuses to reciprocate any love to her because of some imaginary matrimony he's created in his mind. It's really sad too because, in my opinion, Ruka is a really fun and sweet character. I'm not gonna say she's well written, I mean, come on, she's, she's in Rent a Girlfriend, but she's the only character in the show that brings me any semblance of joy. She has a TikTok, she does cute dances, she has her adorable signature blue headband, she's so energetic and silly when she isn't being brought down by the god-awful narrative of the show, she has a great style, she's hardworking, basically she deserves much more than what she gets. It genuinely hurts to watch her in this show, I feel like I'm watching a puppy getting kicked whenever Chizuru and Kazuya pull some shit on her. And I know things only get worse from here on out, and I'm, I'm not looking forward to it. I hate this show. It sucks. It sucks so much. God. Thank you.